Hey, I'm Chris Zeff from Make Everything, and today I'm going to show you how I made custom hardware out of brass using my milling machine and my desktop water jet. Check it out. So this project started out with a template and a sample that I made in steel to give the client an idea exactly what they were getting. These handles are for some large cabinets at an apartment in New York City. And the reason that I was asked to make them is because the current handles were too small. So I designed something and I wanted to give them a physical sample that they could base their decision off of. Now the one that was made out of steel, I cut the faceplate on my Wazer desktop water jet and I would be using the same file and program here to cut this 1 8 inch thick brass. This is 316 brass and it cuts really well on the Wazer, but I did make sure to buy a piece of material that was pretty close to the overall size and I had to be pretty careful to make sure that my cutter head ran in the correct path so I wouldn't cut off the edge. The Wazer makes quick work of brass and it makes a perfect cut even on the inside which is really where a machine like this shines. Um, it takes about an hour to do the cut but in that hour I'm able to do other things like work on a milling machine. After the first cut's done I'm able to do the second one in the same position. All right, so after I got the first one cut out, um, I had it on a longer piece of material, right? What I did was I used an off cut of sheet metal of the same thickness and I screwed it down basically to make a stop. So now what I can do, and what's cool about the Wazer is that this, this bed is just a corrugated plastic. So you really can put your hold down sort of like wherever they work. So what I'm gonna be able to do now is take my next piece to cut my next drawer pull face out of and I can just register a oversized piece of brass and know because my tolerance is pretty tight as you can you could see in that first cut I was pretty close to the edge so now look I can just butt that up right in there nice get a couple of screws out on the perimeter over here and run the same cut program and I won't have to worry about you know going off the edge Everything's going to line up perfect, um, and I'm going to get the most yield out of my material. The corrugated plastic bed on the Wazer is awesome because you can just throw the screws in wherever you want. And while that cut is going, I can start on the milling machine to make the cups for the back side of these poles. Now I'm using 5 8 inch thick solid brass, and I'm going to be using a two flute high speed steel end mill to do all my milling uh, from my rough sizing to my pocket milling as well. Now the first operation here is to get all four of the pieces of brass down to the correct size. So I'm just getting them set up in the vise and I'm sort of sizing these based on the actual plates that I'm getting off the water jet. Um, I have them all dimensioned on the computer but I wanted to dimension them in reality so Using the calipers, I just decide exactly how wide this piece of solid brass needs to be. And then I use the milling machine to just get it down to that exact size. Once I have one of those done and I have the caliper set, I can do the other three. I mark them off with my knife and I just basically just mill to those scribe lines until the calipers fit perfectly over them. It's not the most precise way to do a milling operation, but it works for me. And, you know, I don't mind checking a couple extra times in order to get the right product. Now once I have all four of those done, I can set up a stop on the milling machine and then I can start to mill out the pocket that's going to go inside this solid brass now, I used sort of a new operation for me on the milling machine to get this done without using a DRO or checking my knobs to try and, you know, count off 
the dimensions in thousands. So I used my caliper to scribe the border that I wanted to remain on the brass. And then I used these little T-stop blocks that are basically just an Allen head cap screw in a block of steel that's threaded um, for 3 8 And now what these are going to allow me to do is there's a little T-track on the bed of my milling machine in both the X and the Y direction. And what I'm doing here is I'm running my table across until my cutter is exactly where I need it to be and then I'm tightening down those stops. So what this is going to allow me to do is it's going to allow me to run to a set point and not have to even think about where my cutter is. Just basically turn the knobs until the machine stops me and as long as I use the stop on the top side that's next to the vise, I'm going to get the exact same results out of all four of these pieces of brass. Now this is critical because I want to make sure that these things all look the same. Um, I don't want any of them to be different, but I also don't want to waste a lot of time, you know, messing with them, trying to get each one of them perfect by counting off on the dial. So if I spend maybe five or ten minutes doing this, I can I can make a hundred of these and they would all come out exactly the same. Once I have those set, I can start with my milling operation. So the first thing I do is I set my depth. So I actually take the piece out and bring my cutter down and I set a final depth using that little stop on my quill. And then I'll actually step into this in a couple of different you know, uh, cutting operations because I don't want to try and get there in one shot. Before I clamp everything up to cut, I just deburr it with a little file get everything in there up against the stop and I can start with my milling. The two flute end mill makes quick work of the brass. It leaves a really nice finish and I just basically go back and forth across the material and I get kind of close to my cut lines but I don't really go to them uh, in this first operation. I want to leave a little bit, maybe five thousandths left and then on the final depth pass I take one last cut and I do a clean up around the whole perimeter and it gets me a really nice surface finish. Um, I was running my machine on a little bit lower of an RPM so that it wasn't ejecting the chips as far. It kind of makes a big pile of chips inside the piece but I found that that was better than having hot chips flying all over the shop. I'd rather have a more manageable little pile and take some breaks and clean them up with the paintbrush. But it's really forgiving when you're milling uh, brass with high speed steel. You can pretty much use your feeds as fast as you want. Um, you could run it probably as fast as the machine will go. And it's still going to cut really nice. So that's the nice thing about working in brass. Very forgiving. Now while this is happening, the Wazer was cutting the other face plates. And once I got one of them done, the rest of them were pretty straightforward and easy to accomplish. Now the finishing on these is the big part. So I use a flex shaft with a little one inch disc uh, with sandpaper on it to get rid of some of those milling machine marks. Now these are gonna get silver soldered but I wanna make sure they're as clean as possible before I do that. So using the flex shaft, using a little scotch bright wheel, I'm using a bunch of different attachments and I'm just trying to clean up and get rid of all my milling machine marks so that it's nice and uniform on the inside. And again, I'm getting things as clean as I can get them before the silver soldering operation just because I want to start from a good point and then I can work back once the soldering is done. The other thing these need are four screw holes around the outside of the dish so that they can be screwed into a cabinet. I mark these off with the caliper and then I use a little spring-loaded punch to make sure that they get the correct locations and my drill bit doesn't wander. Now over on the drill press, I put some Sharpie on those marks just so I wouldn't miss them in the brass. It's a little hard to see things and I punch those holes. Um, pretty straightforward. I'm using number six screws, so I drill a relatively small hole. And now here's a, a little trick when you have to do a countersink on the inside of something like this cup. I'm using a ball and carbide burr, and I'm using the flex shaft to just sort of dab in on the top of that hole. And what that's going to do is going to give me a nice oval sort of countersink without having to try and get a countersink in there because I don't have one small enough or a drill that would appropriately get in there. 
and you can see it leaves a nice little countersank hole and I'm able to get to it at any angle even with this you know short sort of tolerance between the two sides. Once that's done again I go back in there with a little bit of scotch Brite and I just clean up the inside there and then I take some sandpaper on my surface plate and you know, I've had comments before about the way I use my surface plate, but I basically use this one as a, a sanding spot because it's just dead flat. It's really nice for flattening parts. I have another one that I use for indicating, but this one is this one's basically a giant sanding block. I use a file to clean up some of the water jet marks on the inside of the rectangle, and this is super easy again in brass. It's really nice, and that's this file has a safe edge, so I don't have to worry about going over the side and I clean the file out with my little compressed air and just make sure everything's nice and clean and ready to go over to the next step, which is gonna be silver soldering. Now I'm using a fire brick on top of my anvil so I don't distribute any heat anywhere I don't want it to go, and I'm using a flux to make sure that all the solder flows pro properly. I put a old hammerhead on there as weight and I use a little brazing torch with my oxyacetylene tank and get this thing nice and hot so that the silver solder will flow and make a really, really strong joint. I'll put links to the flux and the silver solder that I used in the description of this video if you want to check it out. I did some testing with this before I made this project. I silver soldered two pieces of brass together and I tried to stick a wedge in there and break them apart and it was nearly impossible to break them. Once I'm done soldering them, I actually stick the whole piece in between my two three quarter inch thick quench plates and that just helps it cool and not warp, which is really important. I didn't want them to bend. Once they were all cool, I go over to the sandblasting cabinet and I sandblast away all of those soldering marks and all the flux marks. I found that this was the absolute best way to get into all the nooks and crannies and get this back down to a base material that I could then go and start the very long and painful finishing process on. I'm going to do a lot of sanding, a lot of hand sanding, bring these all the way up from 120 grit to 1000 grit with a wet dry sandpaper. I'm doing the faces, the sides, everything using water as a lubricant on all four of these pieces. I want them to be as flat and uniform as I can possibly get them. What's nice about brass is it doesn't clog up sandpaper as much as steel does. So it's a little more forgiving and you can use water to kind of help clear the sandpaper as well. And here I'm using my homemade disc sander and this thing really helps flatten stuff out. And then again, I just want the faces of these cup poles to be as flat and uniform as possible. And I've got 220 grit wet dry sandpaper on there. Over on the bench, I bring these up by hand from 220 grit all the way up to 1000, like I said, using water and getting inside and outside. Really just trying to give these a uniform scratch pattern that will then be able to be buffed out on the big buffer. Once I'm all done bringing it up to 1000 grit, I have 2000 grit on a little round disc on the Fordham. And what that does is it really just sort of takes some of the little fish hook scratches that I make moving back and forth and gets them out so that when I head over to the buffer, everything blends out perfectly. I'm using red compound on this big uh, one and a half horsepower three phase buffer. And this thing makes quick work of this brass and brings it up to a mirror polish really, really easily. The only hard part is keeping these things in your hand so they don't go flying across the shop and get destroyed. I routinely clean out the buffing wheel with a rake and I add a lot of compound just so that I make sure that I get everything polished nice and uniformly. Once I'm done over on the buffer, I take some acetone, 
to clean up all the residual buffing compound, just using a microfiber cloth and some Q-tips to get all that little black stuff and any of the marks on there. The microfibers will actually sort of polish the brass as well. I had experimented with some brass polishing compounds from, you know, like the local hardware store, but I found that even with the microfiber, they were a little too abrasive. They really didn't, can you know, work well with the mirrored finish, um, and I wanted to remain. I wanted them to be as shiny and nice as possible when the client got them. What happens after they're installed, these are going to remain unlacquered, so they will tarnish. So, you know, I want them to be perfect when they arrive, and then we'll see what happens from there. Overall, I am super pleased with how these things came out. Getting any metal to a mirror polish can be very challenging, but these things came out really well. And to make four of anything the same can also be a bit of a challenge. So overall, super happy with it. And I learned a little bit along the way. All right, that about does it for this project. Overall, I'm super happy with the way these things came out. Getting the hang of polishing them um, and getting them all to a consistent look was really challenging, but I enjoyed it. I learned a couple tricks along the way, like with my milling machine and those little stops, and with the water jet, using that little bracket piece to lock everything in and get the same results every single time. Stuff like that uh, can be really helpful in the future, and I try to learn a little bit on every project, and every project helps me refine my skills to do the next one that much better. Um, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with friends. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more content like this. If you want to see behind the scenes stuff, what I'm doing in the shop on a day-to-day -day basis, I post on my Instagram every day on my stories and answer a lot of questions through my messages. You can follow that here at Make Everything Shop. Hope you enjoyed this video. Again, I'm Chris Zett from Make Everything, and I hope to see you on the next one. Thanks.